Hello and welcome to the third devlog for growth, my cozy game about caring for houseplants and watching them thrive. Now as you've seen in the intro, the first thing that I've done is add a couple of new items, that is, this 2x2 IKEA style shelf and this set of books. I've done this for more variety, but I also wanted to implement a new feature, that is, the ability to place items inside another item. Now this may seem simple, but the way that I currently have collision set up actually makes this impossible. You see, currently, each item only has one collider, which is used both for creating this highlight when an object is hovered over, as well as being used for the collision when placing an object. The problem here is that due to the way this collision system works, this collider has to be a box or a capsule. This means that placing an item inside another item is impossible, as it is just then colliding with that box collider. To fix this, I first separated out the collider component and created a separate highlightable component, which is just used for detecting the mouse over for highlighting. This means objects like leaves, which shouldn't care about item collision, no longer have to have a collider component, simplifying the checks required in the collision code. This also means that I can use the more accurate mesh collider for highlighting instead of having to use a box or capsule collider. I can now also use this mesh collider to check for collisions with other objects, meaning that I can now place this object on the shelf as it is using the mesh collider instead of the inaccurate box collider as it was before. The next thing that I've been working on is the saving and loading system. If I'm honest, this is something that I've been putting off for a while now, as I wasn't sure how complex this would be to implement. However, thanks to the data format for items that I implemented earlier, this turned out to be relatively simple, taking only 100 lines of code or so. I just had to extend the item data format a little to also account for the transformer objects placed in the world. Then, when you save a scene, you simply iterate through all the items placed in the world, getting their data, and then writing that to JSON. At this point, we also write all of the inventory data to JSON. When it comes to loading, we just have to do this process in reverse. Firstly, we iterate through the JSON data for each placed object, instantiating them as we go. For inventory items, the item data is just added to the inventory. Now, as you can see here, I have a scene set up with some furniture and hit save. Then I can move the objects around, place things from the inventory or put them back in the inventory. And then when I hit load, everything is reset to the state that it was in when I clicked save. Finally, as you've seen in the intro, I also wanted to implement the ability to change the color of objects, similar to how you can edit materials in games like The Sims 3. This allows players to set up their rooms exactly to their tastes, creating aesthetic color combinations. As you can see, when I click on an item, the inspect option is then replaced with an edit materials option. Then, you can select each editable material on the object and use the color picker to choose the color. The color picker is a package that was made by Judah 4 on GitHub. There's a link in the description. I'm also planning to add a reset to default button as well as making editing the materials cost money, although this isn't implemented yet. I also added these custom colors to the item data so that the colors are retained when the items are moved to the inventory or the game is saved and loaded. And that's all I have for you for now. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and join my Discord server for discussions and more incremental updates. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.